Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Yeah, I keep playing with Brutland Care equipment. This set uh, belongs together, I guess, because it they were mounted like this with cable ties all around them. So I would assume this is a complete set. And uh, as far as I can see, it contains of a vibration pickup pre-amplifier type 2625, where you can select all sorts of different displacement and velocity and whatnot, and the different uh, different angles of gain and stuff like that. And I guess you connect three different sensors and then you get the output and here you can select between the different sensors or something like that and then you'll get the output, right? And then there is this accelerometer uh, calibrator uh, type 4291 and that is, look at that something that can vibrate i guess it's a vibration motor of some sort look at that deal, deal, deal. it also says something about here you adjust to some level here for actual load and mass and stuff like that we've got some inputs external or internal input and battery check as well oh there was also some was it that one No. And level. And this one is really, really tight. Tough to turn. And then there is a power supply type 2805. Where you can select between plus minus 14 or plus 40. Or what is that? 28. That is really weird. And it looks like if you unscrew this, you can probably pull out something here. Let's start looking at the, the power supply. It's really, really heavy. So we've got a lot of different output connectors. So there's one connector with this plus, minus, and zero, and two of them for channel one and two. And then we also got everything in separate quarks cables or connectors like that so it's both the plus minus and then the 28 in different outputs and then there's this old style mains and it says something switch for proper line voltage la 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 on the bottom cover so that is okay here it is so that is correct Oh, so that is what I did when I was turning this. Okay, so this is how it works. This is how you release the bottom. More or less. Looks like you're releasing it, but you are maybe not completely releasing it somehow. Okay, here we go. Ooh. So we're already in. I mean, this looks pretty okay. A little bit of capacitor fungus here in the end. So, how about the others? Yeah, okay. They didn't really puke all over the place, but there might be a little bit of rivel in that one may be look at that it looks like it did yeah look at that that is not good is it so we need to service at least that one but I think it's better to service all of them so let's look at the look at the back of that beauty here 
So external power supply, 28 volts in a really tiny, tiny little coax connector like that. And it is super tiny. Obviously, we've got some different inputs and to attenuator, output velocity coil. And this can also run of an external power supply or a battery of 28 volts. Ooh, that is scary. Let's look at the, the last one. Yes, that is the same kind of thing. Battery and external power max load, 5 milliamp. And there's also something about this is the input, the power supply input, and a battery, external power. Or it can be off. So I bet. Oh, no. That is not good. I mean, if you ever figure this out, how can we make people always remember to remove batteries from stuff they do not plan to use for a long time? Oh, no. So that will be 27 volts from running off uh, three 9 volt batteries, right? So let's have a look. There's also some battery stuff here. Is it going to be worse? Better. Okay, that is better. <laughs> Phew! So, have we got... It is so insanely heavy. Hey, we got this kind of motor or voice coil or whatever kind of thingy that is. I mean, so if, what is that? We've got some funny things sitting here, right? What exactly is that? And it's, there's nothing here on the front. That is interesting. <laughs> I want to find a screwdriver and have a look. So I am now ready to test the power supply. I found the connector, and look at that one. I don't know if this is exactly the the right connector I got, but it fits really good, and it contacts also very good to the chassis. So this pin here is the chassis, and this is of course also my my chassis in uh, in this part. So now I got a protective earth connection. And I should be safe to power this up. I've actually been looking a little bit into this power supply. Because we got those channel 1 and channel 2 selectors. Where we can select plus minus 14 or plus 28. And obviously um, it's only the output from the power supplies we configure to two different output sets but it isn't really that easy to figure out exactly what happens here because <laughs> the fun thing is this red wire is the sensor point of the two this is my zero so zero volts is red wire and it is also directly connected to that one and of course the other channel is that one. Isn't that funny? Red wire is zero. <laughs> Duh. Okay, and then we got the positive and the negative in a black and a gray wire. And that goes, of course, to the two center points of the switch. And then we can select up or down and have it here or here. All those outputs, all those five outputs, they're just connected in parallel. So you can you can power supply five different things 
with those two outputs and they are of course in completely individual outputs as you can see here they're isolated from chassis so that is of course what we want for our analog systems i think i would like to power this up before i change the capacitor so it's going to be a very brief power up and measure if i got correct voltage and and stuff like that i think i will get some ripple on one of the outputs because i can actually see on, on that capacitor oops it's that one you can actually see some of the funny stuff from the inside of this capacitor was actually leaked out right and it also smells a little bit of capacitor goodies so it's probably better just to remove that one so we don't get another kaboom no more kabooms today oh yeah by the way the transformer look at that so the the width here is just super super matched one millimeter more and it couldn't fit into the case <laughs> that is how well it is fit into this case so why is it not Ooh. <laughs> the light bulb is not working all the time 0 0.9 0 0.5 watts this can't be good this is the switch that is not here we go now we got five three watts of idle so it's the, probably the on off switch because i also looked at the current consumption so there is a problem with the on off switch but when that is working I got exactly plus minus 14 volts on both of them and when they are in in series the output here I got of course 28 so all that works but it's really weird about this on off switch let's try again yeah here we go so that is something I have to look at okay I was right about one thing the capacitors that's really weird one is 800 and one is 400 microfarads <laughs> so that's definitely something here we need to uh to handle it's really funny that you can see that some of the goodies came out from this one and this one is also the low so i'll just put in some 680 50 volts on this 640 okay yeah better fix that i also fixed the switch <laughs> actually uh, a lot of massage on the switch uh, kind of helped the problem but this is a a perfectly um, isolated primary and there isn't any capacitors or any nasty stuff and there isn't no leak at all so i figured out i could just parallel both of the switches and uh, short the other side and that means now I got double chance of having a good contact and that also proved to be a very very good and stable solution so now it is working and the other two in the other side they perfectly works funny funny so now the power supply is done and I was about to assemble it and then I realized the side place, plates, this is a, a classical uh, Brulenker uh, construction, by the way. Uh, the side plates, they're super, super thin and flimsy metal. And then they figured out, oh no, it's a little bit too flimsy jimsy. So they took another just as flimsy piece of metal and glued on the inside. And they always fall off. Look at that. All of them fell off. And so they put on some sort of a contact glue on both sides and then they kind of let it dry and then they push them together or something but there's no contact at all only just tiny tiny little spots 
where the two parts actually touched each other. See? All the other areas here. There were no contact, so the glue didn't, you know, have any effect. This is just wrong manufacturing. <laughs> How funny is that? So now the power supply is up and running, and I think I am ready to power this up. I mean, I find some power transistors in here. And I think this is an oscillator, because I see this. So that's probably a sine wave oscillator, obviously. And this is driving a, um, a power amplifier, and then we can select how much drive we want. And I guess that will be some sensors that is in here to detect how much vibration we got. And that goes to this um, internal, external sensors. So there's probably a some sort of a feedback. Yeah. So we need to select this correctly because we don't have any um, external sensors. And yeah, somebody was in here soldering something it looks like some transistors and stuff was definitely replaced i am a little bit confused about the batteries here because this size looks like a sub c so like four sub c cells right but how is this running off 28 volts external supply versus 6 volts instead of 28. That is weird. And also, this is the switch for the battery or the 28 volts that is in this uh, connector. So, as you can see, hmm really also the the battery or the external voltage in that is my, uh, the negative here is now chassis but that chassis here on this unit is not the same as chassis on that one so this mains power supply chassis here is is our mains wire protective earth for this chassis and then the output is plus and minus or from the power supply, right? Yeah, well, and here's this. There is a, see if I push this, the whole unit is also hanging in some springs. And then there is added a lot of weight to it. And then there is this meter. This is the bulb probably for, oh yeah, on. So this is definitely a bulb. Really cute. Little bulb that sticks halfway through the front here. Lovely. I really hope that one works. So internal generator. Input, input. I'm just going to set, set it to internal generator, right? And then crank this down. Um, yeah, there isn't a lot more to show you guys here, except one little thing that I noticed here on the side, and this is inside. You can unscrew these like I did with this one. And then what exactly is this? Probably a calibrated weight. Maybe you take this and mounted on the other side of something or i don't know this looks a little bit like a place to save some spare kind of things right <laughs> four of them and then they're hidden in here so if you know what that is hmm, interesting i didn't find a manual so 
<laughs> that is why I am one big question mark here and it is actually quite a lot of fun trying to figure out how stuff works uh, I hope you're having a little bit of fun and guesswork meanwhile I'll try and power this up and see if there is any fun in this one right okay so far so good on bulb load mass level adjust to actual load mass so what do we do with the input thingy here internal generator right let's try ha ha look ah look at that and i can feel something here Ooh, you 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 there is definitely a sensor in here and then i can adjust this down here Ooh. and if i touch this i load it i don't know if you can see this oh, i'm going to mount something on this one so you can hear what's going on there's a definitely a some sort of a vibration going on here it feels like 50 or 100 hertz or something like that quite fast but yes this thing is working it's vibrating and it's detecting the vibration and there is a level <laughs> that is so cool i think we could try and add some grams and then see if we can i will find a screw oh we got a thread in here that is a good idea so right now i will adjust this to exactly zero let's see if it goes back oh there is a warm-up time what happened why isn't it back what kind of crap Ah, so hello. Ooh, that looks unstable. Hello. So I now I can adjust it for zero. Okay. Oh, look how unstable it is right now yeah this is the problem always oh, the switches isn't it well the thing is working at least but this switch is bad <laughs> i figured out a way to visualize what is going on here So, this amplifies the vibrations. So now you can hear what's going on, right? Hoo hoo, funny, funny. This is just how you fix stuff. All I did was to super clean this switch. And look what happens now when I take the switch. It's not a lot of bad stuff, right? So if I turn it off and turn it on. It returns more or less to the same point. So now I can play some more with this thing. That is a lot of fun. When stuff really works, it's not super complicated to fix. Isn't it really funny? So this is when you load it. And, ooh. <laughs> so let's play a little bit with the amplifier. I tried to clean up a little bit here because we had a lot of battery corrosion. And this is uh, completely useless. There's no need to 
to save this all we need to know that it is for three nine volt batteries so i think if we keep this in here any next owners they will figure this out quite easily right but see some funny thing is some type of rubber and some type of plastic is just not compatible and it kind of melt together like that so this little rubber gasket it was in the hole here and it turned to goop together with that plastic so that is very very bad combo so this is the on off switch external power dude dude and this is what we want to play with and then we got an output at the back as well and we also got an output on the front and another one in the front and this one is actually a little bit special i might as well show you this because this is the old style connector I don't know exactly what I would call this, a banana with shield probably, but this is the original one. And if you look in the hole here, here is the little spring at the bottom. This is the, the one that ensures there's a good ground connection. And then you just stick this in and now you have a BNC. What else can we see we got? different gain depending on where we are in three one two no four different levels right so that would be the three different inputs i don't understand exactly what you ah of course here you select one of these three to be amplified and then output right so this is the input selector and of course you also select gain range again and then we can play up here with some variable gain here it is uh, translated from velocity and displacement and frequency ranges at and whatnot but obviously this has something to do with frequency range and amplification and this is just the four different pre-selector uh, ranges so yeah, of course I don't have those pickups, so I can't prove this to be working exactly. But what I could do is probably input a very weak signal and see there is gain in this frequency range at least, because I think it says one hertz, ten hertz. Was, I mean, I think I will have a chance, right, to input something, just a few millivolts, and see if I get volts output right i mean that could be interesting all i have to do is connect the 4028 here and see if it works the amplifier itself is just a transistor only solution uh, using quite a lot of different fancy pansy transistors forty two eighty nine or something Probably some fits and sexy stuff, right? They're really cute, this little plastic one. And this, the way that one of the pins, probably the gate, goes into some Teflon. This is for low leakage and the input capacitors like that for the different frequency ranges and stuff like that. We got a lot of resistors and good stuff here. Yeah, a beautiful build, I must say. Yeah, I think we'll try and make a little test setup and see if I can prove this to be amplifying anything. So, here's my little test setup. 
<laughs> I figured out those type of diodes, they fit perfectly fine to create the connection for for this input. And I've been trying all the different uh, ranges and all the different inputs and whatnot. And I got just a uh, like full voltage hammer out here, 14 volts of uh, DC output, no matter what I do here. So you see, and there's obviously no AC gain, no matter how much or how little I input. Uh, of course, it does not respond to a shorted input either. So the, the input circuit here is just blown up. And since it's the same input amplifier that is in use, um, no matter what kind of setting you got here, this is just an input selector or a pre attenuator and all that kind of stuff. This amplifier is just dead. So you need a either a lot of patience, a lot of time. Um, I don't have any of that at the moment. And also you need schematics, so you can probably figure this out quite easily. I would maybe just replace the first few transistors here and uh, see if I could figure out exactly what type they are and all that. But I don't have the right pickups and I don't really have a use for this amplifier anyway it was just cool if it would uh, work and it's just don't so far so good so i will just pack it up and put it back in the shed so i hope you learned a little bit at least we don't need to repair everything just to show how it works and what it consists of and uh, all that but it is, of course, a lot more fun if stuff just works. But no luck today. So see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.